Morning, everybody. Morning, and is it warm enough for you in here? <laughs> Let me assure you, it was warmer about an hour and a half ago. So uh, we've tried to cool it down a little bit, but uh, for those of you in your worship spaces at home, I hope you've got fans going and everything. It's been an absolutely glorious week of uh, weather for all of us. But what a joy it is to join together this morning uh, in, in worship. So as we've been doing for quite some time now, I'm reluctant to light a flame uh, to add more heat, but uh, let's light our candles as that visible sign that we are in the presence of the living God, that Jesus is here and wants to meet with us. Call to worship this morning. I'm going to read a little bit of scripture that uh, for those of you that were here last week, um, you should recognize, but I'm reading a few verses from Matthew chapter 6 from Eugene Peterson's paraphrase of the Bible called The Message. And when you come before God, don't turn that into a theatrical production. Either. All these people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for stardom. Do you think God sits in a box seat? Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God, and you will begin to sense his grace. Doesn't Eugene Peterson have a way with words? He's obviously talking about prayer, but yet you can sense that his word as a pastor, Eugene would say these words relating to our worship. Worship's not about those that are up front. Worship is not a theatrical performance. Peterson is inviting us all of us to come to worship, come simply and honestly as we can manage. Come into this moment to come before our Father in heaven, who knows us, who created us, who loves us, and who wants to meet with us, wants to bless us, wants to pour out his grace before us if we would come and be open to it. So let's come. Let's gather. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this opportunity that we have at the end to come into this place to worship you. We pray this morning that we will come simply and as honestly as we can manage. That we will come to meet with you, that we will come to be met by you. Spirit of the living God, meet with us in this place, in our worship spaces this morning. Touch our lives. Breathe your breath of life over us, through us, into us. Pour out your grace upon us. Bless us with your moving in this place. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please join us in standing as we sing together. I'm here to meet with you. 
come and meet with me. I'm here to find you. Redeem yourself to me as I wait. You make me strong as I long. Draw me to your arms as I stand and sing your praise. You come, you come, and you fill this place. Won't you come, won't you come and fill this place? I'm here to meet with you. Come and meet with me. I'm here to find you. Reveal yourself to me as I wait. You make me strong as I long. Draw me to your arms as I stand and sing your praise. You come, you come and you fill this place. Won't you come, won't you come and fill this place? Lord, come, Lord, come and fill this place. Wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions the truth will hold, your great love will see me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. You are my peace, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you, whoa, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore, whoa, whoa. safe to shore, whoa. safe to shore, whoa. safe to shore. Hear what tomorrow brings with each morning to rise and sing. Our God's love will lead us through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. You are my peace, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. Shining in the darkness, I will follow you, whoa, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the power, you will carry me safe to shore, whoa, whoa, safe to shore, whoa, whoa, safe to shore, whoa. You 
We had some beautiful actions in the back there for that one. I love that. Thank you very much. From Steve? From Steve. Yeah, he was doing a great job. So I should almost bring Steve and Owen up to the front, and we should vote on who's got the best haircut this morning. Like, seriously, you've both shamed me into any of my summer haircut. Everybody look around at Owen. Owen's been having, like, he's, he's had hair down to here for, like, the whole way through COVID. Is that the first haircut you've had since the beginning of COVID? Did, how much did you have to pay to get all of that cut off? Like a hundred bucks or something? Wow. First time your neck has actually seen the world. In like, so, yeah. And Steve, did you cut your own? Diana did. Well, what? Yeah, and that's what happens, right? <laughs> right there. So. Uh, well, it's just, it really is just a joy to be um, what, together this morning. And what a joy we're, and a treat we're in for right now, because this past week has been girls camp at uh, Camp Douglas. Uh, can you imagine a bunch of girls all in the same place? My, it must have been fun. Yeah, Beth? Was it fun? You're now having a week's holidays. Yeah, you're having a week's holidays before you take my two back to camp with you. God bless you. Um, so we're actually going to see the camp video from this past week. Oh, and over to you.
I live in it? What? Do I live in it? Yeah. So astounding. Love is an ocean, you can drown me. The sweet embrace, the lovely taste, I taste and see. I'm under grace, the place to be. It means I'll never need an umbrella. I'm cool in the cold, in the hot weather. Whether or never I ever understand I'm a man in the hands of great plans. I stand with faith there in a life I never known to touch. And still I saw my clutch, but I'm like, what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? Live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. So what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? And live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. Yeah. Princess Tales. Speaking of a princess, Beth, one up quick. Impromptu. You've just finished the LIT Leaders in Training program. You're there. Um, how, did, how many leaders were, did you train? Uh, we had five of them. Five. How did it go? It was amazing. We had an awesome three weeks um, with our five 15 and 16 year olds. Um, learning, teaching them all about what it's like to be a leader at camp. Um, they got to like shadow um, cabin leaders for a week. So they basically lived with the cabins. And then the next week they shadow program staff and kind of get to see the behind the scenes. Um, it was lots of fun. What's the high, what has been the highlight for you of being at camp during the last? Um, the weekends are really fun with LATs because we have the entire camp to ourselves. Um, so we get to, there's a lot of bonding. A lot of fun activities you get to do um, and just getting to know each of the kids yeah great and then going back you're going to get cabin leader then for probably and nothing is set in stone yet but probably you better be a cabin leader <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's going to be an eruption uh, uh, but uh, anyway it's been going well every, every the whole staff i hear from pam on uh friday the staff are doing really well great team yes. so it's been and you're all on a week's holiday but you're back yeah. next friday for family camp that's right Keep praying for Beth and the whole staff and volunteers as they get back next Friday. Great to see you. Um, so Daniel <clears throat> sent out a quick message yesterday morning, Chico, um, because this past week has obviously the weather has been so hot that I believe some of the staff they sleep in the retreat center on the top of it, which is a all the main buildings are really like just wooden structures and they got far too warm. So some of the girls were actually sleeping downstairs uh, in the kind of the lounge area with wet towels over the top of them to try and get them to sleep. So they put an urgent request out if anybody would like to help them raise some money. They're going to actually try and buy a couple of small air conditioning units. Um, if I, they have an off week this week, if you can help at all, please email director at campdouglas.ca directly um, because Daniel would really need to know um, that that money's available and I'm sure he can get something sorted on the Sunshine Coast. So please, I'll just throw that out to you. Uh, speaking of Daniel, August 21st is coming up, three weeks today. Um, we will be gathering in the morning for Thanksgiving service, Mo Blackman, who just happens to be an elder, a ruling elder at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Duncan. So Mo's actually going to be here in the morning um, because they're coming through her and Wes um, for a couple of weeks. Mo's going to be speaking at that service, but we're going to have a Thanksgiving service uh, led by the youth band that morning, and then we'll all stay for a little bit of fellowship after, because hopefully we're going to have uh, one of those rectangular things, if you know what I mean, and uh, we've got a, a few uh, uh, presentations to, to give out that morning. Uh, we'll do that as a church family before Pastor Big shows up in the afternoon. Uh, speaking of that presentation, you've been receiving emails. If you want to be involved in that, I would urge you to get that to me within the next week or so, so we can actually get things sorted. Um, so uh, I will leave that with you. And um, the August 21st in the afternoon, 3 p.m., we're going to gather for a church service here. It's actually a presbytery service, right? That's what we call it, because we get the opportunity to ordain Daniel, but it's in our congregation. So it's our service. I would invite everybody to that. Um, and then we're going to stay around for a congregational barbecue after um, things are uh, being organized uh, really well for that. So 
make sure you got that in your diaries. Make every effort to free up August 21st to be part of that in full day. Um, there will be no coffee and tea this Wednesday. Uh, we've been mentioning this over August. We, we were kind of doing things on a bit of an ad hoc basis. We won't be having it this Wednesday. I have an appointment on Wednesday morning, so I won't be able to be here. Um, so please um, just make sure for those of you. Are you going to run it this Wednesday? Scratch what I've just said. Uh, Steve and I are going to run it this Wednesday. Uh, so there will be tea and coffee this Wednesday morning. Uh, my last announcement, I did see her coming in, so now I'm actually looking to see if I can see where she is. I've completely lost her now. Leslie, where are you? First person I was looking at, and then I just kept looking around. Uh, stand up, Leslie. I'd like to present to you our new treasurer of our church. Leslie has been appointed by the board. Give her a round of applause. Or, uh, well. Thanks, Leslie. Uh, Frances asked us about a year ago that she was uh, likely to move on. Uh, her and Cor are obviously trying to, um, they're, they're hopefully making a lot more trips back to South Africa over the next few years. Um, and so Frances asked that we would uh, find a replacement for her. And Frances said she would stay on until the board actually said that. So thanks to Paul and the board. Uh, they've obviously had conversations and uh, Leslie has agreed to it. They appointed Leslie. And so that's in, with an immediate effect. In fact, our sincere thanks to Frances. We thanked her at the annual meeting. Um, again, uh, she's just been a star for many years here in being the treasurer. She's going to help Leslie in the transition over the next coming months. So we are very thankful for that. Uh, without further ado, uh, then we are going to invite you to stand and we're going to sing again a uh, hymn called Come Thy Fine. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, 
Seal it for thy courts above. Thank you, thank you, Seal. Good morning. In James 5.13, it says, there's a prayer for that, when it reads, is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. You know how smartphones or your iPhone these days say there's an app for that to fix just about any problem? Well, that's even more true when it comes to prayer. Are you in trouble? Are you happy? Are you grieving? There's a prayer for that. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Prayers and thanksgiving are just a powerful combination. When we say we recognize our need for God and go right to the source for help, recognizing and expressing our gratitude in every situation, with those prayers, results in a peace that passes all understanding, a beautiful gift in times of stress, worry, anxiety, and all kinds of trouble. So let's pray together. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we're here to meet with you. Come and meet with us. We're here to find you. Please reveal yourself to us. In the silence, you won't ever let go. In our questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead us through. You are our lighthouse shining in the darkness. We will follow. We will trust the promise that you will carry us safe to shore. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are the light of the world, guiding our steps on your path. Your word says that you are a good father who gives us good gifts. Thank you for the gift of the church, this church, a community, your children, that you have gathered together to worship, serve, pray, and love. Give us strength to live our lives as ambassadors for you in the world. Lord, bless your church and keep us pure. Make your face shine upon us. Turn your face towards us and give us peace, Lord. All get good gifts around here are sent from you. So we lift our hearts up to you now and always. God, in praise and thanksgiving, as we count our blessings and acknowledge your goodness, our hearts go out to those who do not have and who are in need. We thank you for plentiful harvests and full refrigerators. We thank you for air conditioners. We thank you for fans. And we supply, please supply those who are hungry. We thank you for jobs that provide for our families and supply the needs for our society. We pray that you would care for those who have no work, for the dignity and purpose it brings. We thank you for the opportunities and choices, for, meaning, for meeting our challenges, and pray that you would give a sense of purpose to those who feel trapped. We thank you for family and friends who love us and care for us, and pray that you would befriend those who are alone. We pray for the leaders of our country, our province, and our district. We pray for all peace officers, paramedics, and fire service, especially those actively fighting forest fires in our province. We pray for those who are having a challenging time with this heat wave. Help them to stay cool and stay healthy. We pray for those experiencing unrest or wartime in the world. Heavenly Father, lay down your strong arm of justice and let love prevail over all. When evil darkens our world, word, our world, sorry, give us light. When despair numbs our souls, give us hope. When we stumble and fall, please lift us up. When doubt assails us, give us faith. When nothing seems sure, give us trust. When ideals fade, give us wisdom. When we lose our way, please continue to be our guide, be our light, that we may find serenity in, pre in your presence and purpose in doing your will. Lord, we have special people in our lives that we pray for in our hearts and minds. So now in this minute of silence, we raise their names to you.
Lord, then there are others who raise their names aloud. Una Wood, Louise Raynard, Janice Darlington, Ron Edwards, Liz Lilly, Lauren Dennis, Kel Kaiser, Penny McDonald, Margaret Williams, John Campbell, Alan Bone, Joanne Graham, Dean Scott, Helen Arnett. We will not fear what tomorrow brings, Lord. With each morning, we will rise and sing. Your love will lead us through. You are the peace in our troubled sea. And we ask all of this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Please join us in standing once again as we sing together. Men of faith, rise up and sing of the great and glorious King. You are strong when you feel weak. In your brokenness complete Shout to the north and the south Sing to the east and the west Jesus is Savior to all Lord of heaven and earth The north and the south Sing to the east and the west Jesus is Savior to all Lord of heaven and earth We sin through fire We sin through rain We've been refined by the power of His name We're growing deeper in love with you you turn the truth on our lips. Rise up, church, with broken wings. Fill this place with songs again of our God who reigns on high. By his grace, a king will fly. Shout to the north and the south. Sing to the east and the west. Jesus is Savior to all, Lord of heaven and earth. We shout to the north and the south. Sing to the east and the west. Jesus is Savior to all. Lord of heaven and Our scripture passage for today is Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 to 15. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. 
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sin, your Father will not forgive your sin. Well, last week and today we are looking at what, at what has become known to all of us as the Lord's Prayer. But as I said last week, it's not His prayer. It's our prayer. Right in the heart of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, recorded for us in Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7, we find this prayer that Jesus taught you and I to pray. As we journeyed through the whole entire sermon over the past couple of months, I kept hearing myself ask a very simple question. How does this prayer that we know so well relate to the larger context of the Sermon on the Mount? I think I'm really asking myself, Martin, when you pray the Lord's Prayer, do you think at all about the Sermon on the Mount when you pray it? Should you? Should we? Last week, we looked at the first half of the prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If we were to ask ourselves, what is the will of the Father? Or what does the kingdom of heaven look like? Or how might God's name be held in the highest of regard on earth as it is in heaven? There are many ways to answer those questions many ways. But specifically, relating this first half of this prayer to the context of the Sermon on the Mount, how might we best answer those kinds of questions? Well, for starters, go right back to the introduction to the sermon. Go back to the Beatitudes, those eight character traits of someone who has committed their life to following Jesus Christ. Those eight personality traits are bookended by a phrase. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Bookends. Giving us that indication that all eight characteristics have to be held together. Eight character traits of Jesus, for someone following Jesus, for someone who is hoping to become a beatitude person, the more those character traits become evident in us, the more that person is becoming a kingdom person. God's reign, God's rule, God's will will be done in them, through them. What is the Father's will for you and for me? Look again at the center of the Beatitudes, the center of the entire Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Filled. As I said last week, I like to picture that word being filled up like a glass of water. That's a great image. Being filled up more and more and more with Jesus filled up so we almost overflow beyond the glass outward. The word itself, fill, really means to be completed or to be made whole, W-H-O-L-E. That's God's will for you and for me. God's will is to fill us up, to make us whole, to complete us, for his life to be in us and overflow out of us. All of this relates directly to this word, righteousness. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be those that are filled up. I asked you all to contemplate that metaphor over this past week. 
How many of us can imagine being absolutely starving with hunger and desperate for a drink of water? And all we would want is to get filled. This past week was a hot week, right? I'm sure all of us have drank so much water this past week and other things to stay hydrated. Can you imagine this past week if you did not have water so readily available? How quick would you become weak and have aching heads and stomachs? How quick would you become desperate? Blessed are those that have that deep aching within their souls to be filled up with Jesus. I asked last week, I asked it again this week, do we have that aching? Do we have that hunger, that thirst, that desperation for Jesus' life to be in us? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They will be filled. The heart of Jesus' sermon, the main character trait that fills all of us up to become more like Jesus himself is righteousness. The heart of the Lord's prayer, our prayer, is righteousness. Even though the word itself is not actually in the prayer, the prayer is all about righteousness. I argued last week that the reasons that Jesus prays the reasons he teaches you and I to pray the way he does is because he desires three things. Number one, for God to be worshipped in and through us. Righteousness. Number two, for others to be drawn in to this right relatedness with him, with the Father. Righteousness. And number three, for those, for you, for me, to become sanctified, for you and I to be set apart, for you and I to be sent into the world as light, for you and I to make an impact in the world so that through us, others will glorify the Father in heaven. Righteous. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. To pray this part of our prayer is focusing you and I on living lives of righteousness. We are acknowledging it and we are laying ourselves bare, basically, before God to say, I want this, I desire this, to be in right relationship with you, Lord Fill me up today and always. And this theme of being in right relationship is exactly then what we see in the second half of the prayer. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, confession time. Uh, I don't know about you. I've prayed this prayer so many times in my life with so little thought. But the little thought I do have when I pray it completely skews the prayer. I think subconsciously when I pray the second half of the Lord's Prayer, this is what I am praying. Give me today my daily bread, what I need, my desires, my needs. Forgive me my debts and my transgressions. Father, forgive my wrongs and lead me not into temptation. Deliver me from the evil one. Father, look after me, please. Amen. I'm not asking for a show of hands, but I'm wondering if any of you can relate to that chain of thought in the Lord's Prayer. But it's not about me. It's not about you for that matter. It's our prayer. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, we are not praying it individually. We are praying it relationally. Give us today our daily bread. 
Why is Jesus teaching us to pray this line? After all, he's just reminded us in verse 8, your father knows what you need before you ask. Why are we asking for something our loving father knows that we need? What exactly are we asking for anyways in saying, give us today our daily bread? I think the question really is, what is it that we need more than anything? Well, let's assume that the deepest need of all of us is to be filled up with the life of God. And let's assume that for that to happen, Jesus knows what he's talking about. He knows that for us to be filled with the life of God has everything to do with us being in right relationship with God and right relationship with others. Assuming that, what then are we asking for in this line of the prayer? Father, bread. Give us bread. Why bread? Having taught this prayer in Luke's gospel, Luke adds a story. Jesus teaches a story of a friend coming into his house at midnight. And as is the custom, the friend who lives in the house must provide for his guest. I'm guessing, without going into any more detail on the story, you can hear the righteousness in that story. Guest shows up no matter what time of day. When he shows up and knocks at the door, the person inside must provide for him or her. But the one thing that the person inside the house lacks to do that, the most essential thing in order to meet the needs of the friend who arrives at the door is bread. It is, after all, the fork or spoon of an everyday meal. The way to show true hospitality in those days was to provide bread in order for those to be able to use the bread to scoop out the food and eat and be filled. Did you catch what's happening in the story? You are feeding another with bread so that they can be filled. Our greatest need, as we saw in the first half of the prayer, is to be, be filled with the life of God. And immediately, when we swing the pendulum to the second half of the prayer, we are now asking God to give us what we need in order to fill up others. Give us today our daily bread is a plea for God to give us what we need in order to be in right relationship with other people. God, provide us what we need in order to live in righteousness with others. What is it that you need right now to do that? Do you need an opportunity to make things right with someone in your life? Do you know that there's a relationship that has been strained over many, many years? Father, Help me pick up the phone and make it right. I know that sounds easy. And I know it's not. This past week, at the early part of the week, I spent a lot of time painting the big room in our house. And as, as, I, as I was doing it, confession time, I got a lot of paint on myself as well. But as I was doing a lot of painting, I was thinking, because the transformation to our front room was quite evident. From a really dark brown that has been since we moved in, it's now a very light blue. And it just the whole thing's just brighter, bigger. We have a tendency to paint over things and make things look again, look good again. It's easy. The reality is we left everything behind on the inside. The exact same structure. You ever watch Homes on Homes on HDTV, Mike Holmes? I love watching him. Mike Holmes goes in to make things right. And sometimes, for good TV, to make it right, 
He knocks everything down that was there in the first place in order to rebuild everything and make it right. Sometimes in order for us to make things right with another person, we have to go much deeper than just do a paint job. We have to be prepared to make every effort to rebuild. All of us. How do we begin a process like that? Father, forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. Perhaps this is the hardest line in the Lord's Prayer, our prayer to pray. Is Jesus teaching you and I to pray for God to forgive us in the same manner that we forgive others? Now, as strange as that might sound, I think the answer is absolutely yes. Why? Because it should shock all of us when we pray this prayer. But to pray it, we have to realize that for you and I to be in right relationship with God requires us to make every effort to be in right relationship with others. Faith is not a private matter. None of us can be Christians in our own little closets. Our faith, our walk with Jesus, my transformation to become more like Jesus, to be filled up with the life of Jesus, must have an effect on my relationship and my interaction with other people. That makes complete sense to me. When we pray about our daily bread and our forgiveness, it's not about us getting our needs. It's about how do we meet the needs of others? How can we be involved in a process to fill up others with the life of Jesus? Think back to Genesis chapter 12, where God calls Abram and tells him how the world is going to be put right, how he's going to fix everything, the fallenness of the entire creation. Genesis chapter 12, God says to Abram, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. Amen, Lord, that's what we want to hear. Abram, I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. You see, being blessed and being a blessing are two sides of the same coin. You just can't separate them. Which comes first? That's not the question anybody can answer. The reality is at times we are blessed in order to be a blessing, and at other times we are blessed by being the blessing to another. Real forgiveness can only be experienced if we are forgivers. I'll say that again. Real forgiveness that we want so much of, that we want to receive from the living God every Sunday, can only really experience it if we are living lives of forgiveness, if we are forgivers. Father, lead us not into temptation. Lead us, not me. Ah. When we pray this in the prayer, it's not about what we are as individuals tempted to do, our little sinful natures that we're kind of starting to think of and saying, Father, Help me not to do that anymore. What we're actually praying is, Lord, help us together. As a group of people, as a group of believers, to hunger and thirst for righteousness. Father, help us as a church family to hunger and thirst and ache, to be right with you, right with each other, and right with others outside of this building. Do we have that desperation to be able to do that? to leave this place and seek to be in right relationship with others, to do everything we possibly can to glorify God in our relationship and not stray from that desire. Hence why our prayer concludes, deliver us, save us, redeem us, keep us safe 
and secure from any desire of the evil one. What does the evil one desire most of all when it comes to you and I, when we leave this building on a Sunday and head out into the world for the next six days? What is it that the evil one wants to see or wants to do in your life and my life? Let me take you back, all of us, to the Garden of Eden. The Lord God took the very first human being and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye. So they looked good, and they were good for food. They were good to eat. In the middle of the garden were two trees, the trees, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord God commanded the first human being, you are there free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because when you eat from it, you will certainly die. The Lord God gave humanity the tree of life, a tree symbolizing God's will, God's life, God's kingdom. And he said, have at it. Eat, fill up, fill up with my life. Don't eat from that other tree, that tree that we call the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because when you eat of that tree, you will certainly die. You will become everything you were not made to be. Your relationship with God, your relationship with others, your relationship with yourself will be so corrupted, you will die. Instead of filling yourself up, you will become empty. So don't do it. What happened? God made humanity into a perfect relationship at the end of Genesis chapter 2. A relationship that is identified by two Hebrew words, ish and isha, words that mean husband and wife, not man and woman, husband and wife. Perfect relationship. Filling each other up. They were eating from the tree of life. That the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did you give, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, well, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. God didn't say that. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and she ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. What was the desire of the evil one back in Eden? To tempt the perfect relationship into thinking they could have more. They could become more. They could fill up more. Tempted to grab more, they actually became less. See, that's what temptation does. It separates us from righteousness. And so our prayer concludes with our plea that we will not seek more for self, but that we will live our lives seeking God's kingdom and God's righteousness today, tomorrow, always. Our prayer, as Jesus taught us to pray, it ends with the line, deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Over the years, the church added the line we normally add to the prayer. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I think the church added it so that the prayer would not conclude with any focus on the devil. Deliver us from the devil. Amen. But that our prayer would conclude with our focus being on yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. I think ironically, though, that's exactly what Jesus was doing in his own words. 
deliver us from evil is a plea to God, asking the Father, keep us in line with you. Keep us feeding of the tree that you've given to us, the tree of life. Keep us focused on that, on you, on what it means to be filled up together with you, together with others. Don't let us stray away from your will, your desire, your life, seeking something for ourselves. Father, save us. You know what's best for us. Help us hunger and thirst each and every day for righteousness. I wanted to study this prayer over these, next, these last two weeks to ask a very simple question. Does the prayer relate to the overall themes that we've been seeing in the Sermon on the Mount over the past two months? I think the answer is absolutely. But the question I needed to ask myself was, when I pray the Lord's Prayer, when we pray our prayer, should we think about those themes? Should we meditate on those themes? Should praying the Lord's Prayer focus us on those themes? Absolutely. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we, we thank you for this prayer that you taught us to pray. Each and every one of us, I'm sure, from the youngest to the oldest, have prayed this prayer so many times. But so many times we, we just can't imagine the number. Lord, I pray that you would help us pray this prayer and focus on why you taught us to pray this prayer. And what does this mean for our lives? What does it mean for our relationship with you? What does it mean for our relationship with others? What does it mean? about a relationship with ourselves. I pray that when we pray this prayer, we would indeed hunger and thirst for righteousness, to be filled with your life. I pray that when we pray this prayer, we would, we would seek to be filled up, not to feed ourselves, but in order to be able to overflow and feed others with grace, with mercy, with forgiveness, with life. Lord, throughout the sermon, you taught us many examples. And so many of those examples, you have heard that it was said, but I tell you. The person slapped on one cheek, and you, turn, you tell us to turn the other, to pour out grace. Carry double the distance, to pour out grace. to treat others with respect, not lust after them, to be in right relationship with others, to not seek personal, personal gratification, to be puffed up and be commended for how good we are at giving money, at praying, at whatever it might be, fasting, but so that we would become stronger in our faith, and our walk with you, we become so full to overflowing that our life, your life, would flow out onto others. And that all of this would come together, that as you send us out, we would be lights in the world. That as people encounter us, they would see something and hear something and experience something that they would know, they would come to know, was because of our faith. When we pray this prayer, May we pray it in a way that we're not asking about ourselves. We're asking about you and others. The Lord who come with thanksgiving. He comes to seek your kingdom and your righteousness in the words that you taught us to give together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
power and the glory forever and ever. Please join us in standing once again as we sing together. Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice. You became nothing, poured out to death. Many times I've wondered at your gift of life, and I'm in that place once again. I'm in that place once again. Once again, I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again, I thank you. Once again, I pour out my life. Exalted to the highest place, King of the heavens, where one day I'll bow. But for now, I'm neither at this saving grace, I'm full of praise once again. I'm full of praise once again. Once again. cross thank you for the cross my friend thank you for the cross thank you for the cross thank you for the cross my friend thank you for the cross thank you for the cross thank you for the cross my friend yeah. And once again I look upon the cross where you die I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you Once again I pour out my life once again, I thank you. Once again, I pour out my life. Once again, we thank you. Once again, Lord, we pray that you would send us out to pour out our lives, the life that you've given to us for your glory's sake. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the blessing and power of the presence go with us today and always. May that grace, that mercy, that forgiveness, that love, that blessing that we have received, Lord, just overflow from us to others. The people of God said together, Amen hang around for some fellowship i'm sure we're able to go out into under the shade and have a uh there'll be no hugging today because my shirt is soaking uh so god bless you all and look forward to being together next week is the Lord, He reigns on high, He is 
the Lord Spoke into the darkness, created the light He is the Lord And He strengthened Him in ever-ending and days He is the Lord And He comes in power when we call His name He is the Lord Show your power, O oh Lord our God. Show your power, O oh Lord our God, our God. Your gospel, O oh Lord, is the hope of our nation. You are the Lord. It's the power of God for our salvation. You are the Lord. We ask not for riches, but look to the cross. You are the Lord. And we their inheritance give us the loss. You are the Lord. Show your power. Oh! 